All right, this one is 6.3 day two, more vector stuff. Um, today we're going to do unit vectors, some standard unit vectors, linear combinations, and then direction angles. And the end of this is really going to look like what we did last week with polar coordinates. So a lot of that is going to come back and be real familiar to you. First to do a unit vector. In many applications of vectors, it is useful to find a unit vector which has a length of one that has the same direction as the original vector. So this is a vector not with like length of 17 or square root of 130 or whatever. This is a vector that just has a length of 1. So to find a unit vector, you can, t you can divide the original vector by its magnitude. So I would take a vector and I would divide by its magnitude. So I'm going to take the vectors that I have, I'm going to divide by their length, and that'll kind of chop it down, that'll divide it down to a length of 1. So the first example says just find a unit vector in this direction, and then we're going to show or we're going to check our answer and make sure that it does give us a length of 1 because we're creating unit vectors so we want them to just have a length of 1. So this vector is 3, 4. Looks like that. I definitely know that's longer than a length of 1 and I want to somehow chop it down to have just a length of 1. So I'm looking for that vector in the end. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take 3, 4 and I'm going to divide by the magnitude of it. So we have to kind of go off to the side and find the magnitude which would be 3 squared and 4 squared, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. So we're going to take 3, 4, and we're going to divide by 5. So what I'm doing is, I'm really doing like 1 fifth of that vector. So I'm going to distribute that in there, and I'm going to get 3 fifths and 4 fifths. That is what I think the unit vector is that goes in the same direction as this one. And just to check, this vector went over 3 up 4. This one's going to go over 3 fifths and up 4 fifths. So I'm in the same general area. If all of a sudden I had started pointing the other way, we'd know we had done it wrong. So at least I'm going in the right direction. So let's check and see if it actually has a magnitude of 1. So I'm going to check its magnitude. So 3 fifths squared and then 4 fifths squared. And I'm supposed to square root that. 9, I'm sorry, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25. 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. And so I end up with 9 plus 16, which is 25 over 25. So I have square root of 1, which is 1. So I did it. I found a unit vector. I found a vector that has a length of 1 that's in the same direction as 3, 4. Okay? So all we did was just take the vector and we divided by its length. No difficult math there, but if you don't know what unit vector means or what same direction means, or what magnitude means, those are three big words that would render you unable to do this question on the test if you aren't sure about all that vocab. Next one says, find the vector with the given magnitude and in this direction. So I don't want it to have a length of 1, I want it to have a length of 5 this time. But I still want it in this direction. So it looks a lot like this, I want it to be in this direction, and we want it to have a length of 1. This one in the end, we just want it to have a length of 5. We're going to do the same process. We're going to find the unit vector. And when we find it, it has a length of 1, then we're going to multiply it by 5, and then it will have a length of 5. So the whole point is to take a vector. This one is negative 2, negative 3, so left and then down. We're going to take this vector, we're going to shrink it down to a size of 1, and then we're going to multiply it by 5. So then it will be the length of the vector we really wanted. So I'm going to take that vector, negative 2, negative 3, and we're going to divide by its magnitude. And if I square negative 2, I get 4. And if I square 3, I get 9. So this is the square root of 13 for magnitude. So I'm going to pretty much just put the square root of 13 under each of them. <coughs> we can't have square roots in the bottom, so we're going to fix that. We're going to rationalize. And now I have a unit vector. I took a vector divided by its magnitude. This was just algebraic, cleaning it up but this is my unit vector. We didn't want a vector with a length of 1. This has a length of 1 right now. We want it to have a length of 5, so all we're going to do is just times these by 5. What you probably need to remember is that this is 5 over 1, so the 5 goes to the top of the fractions, the 1 goes to the bottom. So it's not 5 gets times by everywhere. 5 only gets multiplied by the top. So negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 and the 5 can't go inside of a square root. If it's not a square root, it can't go in there. And then negative 15 squared to 13 over 13. 
and that is a vector that has a length of 5 and in that direction. Okay. Next we're going to do standard unit vectors. So the unit vectors that go 1, 0, and then 0, 1, so they look like this. They have a length of 1 and it goes from origin to there. That's a unit vector and that's i. And then we have a unit vector that goes from there to there and that one is j. So any horizontal moves, that's i. Any vertical moves, that's j. And these are called standard unit vectors. So they still have a length of 1, unit vector, length of 1. These are just called the standard ones, kind of like our standard unit of measure. Okay? And they are denoted by i's and j's, just kind of covered that. These vectors are used to represent any vector. So this, when it says represent, this is just notation. There is no new math here. This is all just how to write it differently. Okay? So here I have this vector with an x and a y, a v1 and a v2. And if I wanted to write it with i's and j's instead, I would just take each of the parts of the component and we're going to multiply it by its unit vector. Sorry, it's linear Jesus, it's standard unit vector. So what happens is, since this is i and this is j, it just turns into v1i and v2j. This is just notation. Had I taken a vector like 4, 5 and tried to write it in standard unit vector, it would just be 4i and 5j. means the same thing. This vector went to the right 4, up 5. This vector went to the right 4 up 5. It has 4 moves to the right. I'm sorry, 4 horizontal moves because that's i, and then 5 vertical moves because that's j. It's the same thing, different notation. So these scalars are called the horizontal and vertical components. And this whole thing is called a linear combination. When I take two things and add them together, we're talking about a linear combination. Again, this is just notation. There's no math here. If I want to change from component form to linear combination, I just get rid of the bent parentheses, add a plus, and some i's and j's. Okay? Other side. This says let u be the vector with this initial point and terminal point of negative 1, 3. We're going to write it as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors i and j. This is how the test question will look. So if you don't know what a linear combination was or what standard unit vectors are, it's going to be very hard for you to do this, even though the math is very simple. The math is just figure out the component form, which is terminal minus initial. So terminal, negative 1, minus 2, negative 3. 3 minus negative 5, which is 8. And then all you're going to do is go negative 3i and 8j. That's the answer. No difficult math. All I had to do was subtract to find component form. But if you don't know what these two things mean, you won't even know that all you have to do is put i's and j's there. And all this is telling you is that I went left 3, left 3, and that I went up 8. That's what it does. So it's a linear combination of some horizontal moves and some vertical moves. Next, direction angles. Very much like polar. If you remember that stuff from last week, this is, um, they'll come back to haunt you. This is all polar. So this says if u is a unit vector such that theta is the angle from the positive x-axis to u. Holy moly. So make yourself a u vector. Theta is just that angle from the positive x-axis to u. Then whole bunches of stuff happen. If I make myself a right triangle like we did in polar, then this side, which is y, is r sine theta. This side, which is x, is r cosine theta. And then I have a point x, y. That's how I got up there. Okay, So we start with our, u, our vector having component form x, y. How far over, how far up. We can also write that as a linear combination. So I could go x, i, and y, j's. I could also use my sine and cosine stuff from polar coordinates. So this would be like r cosine theta, r sine theta. All different ways to write this vector. And I could even use i's and j's on these guys. So I could go r cosine i, oops, plus, and r sine j. All right? So the angle theta is the direction angle, that's what it's called, of the vector u, period. 
we're talking about a unit vector. So it has a length of one unit vector. If there's another vector out there, v, that makes the same angle, maybe it's down here, but it makes the same angle, same length, in the same direction, okay? Then all I have to do is just adjust length for however long v is. And I can just do that by multiplying by my vector, my xy, my component form. Just take the vector, vector I had and just change its length. As long as it has the same direction, then we're pretty much um, looking at the same vector, okay, just different length. A couple of examples says find the magnitude and direction angle for each of these vectors. The first one says 3i plus 3j, so that means its component form is 3, 3. You want to find its magnitude. So you're going to square both of those and get square root of, um, sorry, 9 plus 9 and square root of 18. In order to find the angle, we're going to use a little bit of last chapter. This is like the helicopter going to the accident. So instead of going over 3, up 3, this helicopter just wants to fly straight there. It has to fly square root of 18, but now I need to know its angle. And the way that you can do that is by tan inverse y over x. So now I found my magnitude and my direction angle for this vector. Next one we're going to do is 3, negative 4. So I find my magnitude. So 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, so this turns out to be 25, which is 5. And then I just do tan inverse. And this one turns out to be negative 53, I think, when I did this, point one maybe. And we typically like to keep our angles positive. So in order to turn an angle positive, you just take it and add 360. So you're just going to kind of, um, it's right here, and you're just going to whip it around the circle one time, land at the same spot, but this time it'll be a positive angle of 306. So there's my direction, there is my magnitude, and I found them both. Last one, it kind of has it all tied in here. If you look close, you can see the angle. So that's my theta. I didn't have to do anything for it. And my magnitude will be that number out in front. We just covered that up here, saying that magnitude will be in front of my sines and cosines. So magnitude is 10. So that's how you can do magnitude and direction angle. Again, this day, not a lot. this is not difficult math. You've done all of this stuff before. But if you are not studying the vocab, if you are not helping yourself out by making some flashcards or a little cheat sheet you keep in your pocket and you look at it every once in a while, the test is going to be really hard because it's hard to keep all of this vocab straight. Okay? Good luck.